In this video, we want to just briefly talk about all the different elements and things that you're going to see within Get Response Marketing Automation when you're building your workflows. So we're going to introduce you to the different elements and the ways that you'll utilize them in the workspace when creating your workflows. And now just as a quick disclaimer, you might be noticing these green dots as I am going through the video today. That's simply because I'm going through this uh, in interactive tutorial that we have available for Get Response Marketing Automation within your workflow creator. And so it's basically a way that you could go through and be able to uh, build a workflow that's guided so you could kind of see uh, for yourself a way that you could build an example workflow with the elements you have available. But maybe if you don't want to go through that video yourself, or excuse me, that tutorial yourself, you could actually just have a look at this video and get an introduction to all of the different uh, elements you have available, all of the different filters, actions, and conditions that you're going to use when creating your workflows. And so you can see here, whenever we've got our uh, workflow creator opened up, you're going to want to, of course, give the workflow a name so you can reference it later. And then you're going to be able to see these different conditions that are available whenever someone is actually uh, going to begin your workflow. So there's these basic ones available, like, you know, for example, subscribes. So a condition of when someone subscribes, we're going to then do this. There's a tag and scoring section for conditions, so if someone has a particular score or tag, and then there's these e-commerce conditions as well. But like I said, I'm going to go through this kind of predefined uh, workflow we have just so you can see an example of a workflow that you could use within your own marketing automation goals. So we're going to click subscribes here, and you can see that the editor opens up for us, and then we can see kind of the ways in general that this workspace is arranged. So this is our general workspace here where we actually build our workflows and to the right is where we'd be able to actually you know edit and add uh, the different elements that we want into our workflow. And again you can see these things grayed out simply because of the way us going through the interactive tutorial together but however we're gonna see that we've got this one enabled because we're gonna actually utilize uh, the send message action. And so again, this is our workspace where we build our workflow and then we build it using all the different elements which are made up of conditions, actions, and filters here at the bottom. So I'm gonna simply drag and drop, that's how you're gonna do everything here, is gonna drag and drop the send message action into the workspace here. We can see it sets itself in. And then we're going to connect these two dots here so the two elements are connected. And so we just simply connect a dot and you can see it becomes highlighted in color and it's ready to, you know, start functioning for us. But we still have to utilize the properties for this particular element that we've just moved over. And so you can see we've got all of our elements here in this elements tab. And then for each element, basically almost every time, you're going to further define its functions and specifics in the properties tab. And so over here, we want to define more specifically what message we're going to be sending to someone when they subscribed via our form. So I'm going to choose this tutorial message here. And then we can see now that both of the elements here are uh, fully colored, which means they're active. And this could be a workflow, for example. Someone subscribes, send a message. It could be as simple as that. But of course, we do want to extend this workflow just a bit more. So I'm going back to the elements tab. And now I want to see if anyone has actually opened this particular message. So I'm going to move it over and you can see it goes into its place. And then yet again, remember we need to click uh, connect these two dots so that it is now a part of this workflow I'm creating. So we connect the dots and then actually want to go ahead and check if someone has actually clicked a link in the message because we're checking have they opened but also have they been clicking you know these are two important things for us to start to discern so i'm going to move over this link clicked condition over here and i'm connecting it to this yes connector so what this means is that someone signs up we're sending them a message we're checking here if they've opened the message and if indeed they've opened the message I want to now check did they click any of the links so that's how the path is working if they opened a message we want to see if they clicked a link and so for this link element in particular we want to define the properties a bit more and we want to actually specify a link so we want to specify a specific link we want to know if they clicked it and so we have to go through this process to choose our specific link from a specific message choosing our message and then finally choosing the link. And so now we can see this one is fully colored as well. It's active and connected because we are now going to check if a specific link was clicked in that message. 
Now we want to add an additional uh, action over into this workflow, which is going to be the tag action. So we're moving it over here, dragging and dropping, and connecting the tag action to this negative path or the no, you know, was this message opened? No, so we're going to give them a tag. And so when we're doing that, we've moved over this tag action. We want to go over to properties and select the tag. And so at this point, you could create a new tag uh, that you haven't created yet, or you can usually be able to choose from ones that you've created. But in this example, we want to show you that you would create a tag. So I'm gonna simply call it inactive seven because I've created several inactive tags for my example, but you could name it what you wanted. And so we'll add it and now you can see it's active now. If they did not open this message, assign the tag of inactive seven to their subscriber profile. Now moving back over to elements because we've got even more we want to build to this workflow. We want to use the scoring action. So this is a really cool one as well. We could begin to actually score subscriber engagement and behavior, which would really help you, you know, see really who some of your loyal, engaged customers, maybe which ones are kind of lagging behind and create some strategies like that. But we're gonna move over the scoring action over here, dragging and dropping, and yet again, connecting it to the positive path or the yes um, condition basically if someone did click that link. So the specific link we specified up here, if someone clicked the link, if they did indeed click it, we want to give them a score. So we need to go back to properties and add points. So it's up to you how you set up your own uh, scoring system. You need to define for yourself how much uh, opens are worth to you, clicks, different you know subscriber behaviors and actions that they could take. What is it worth to you? 10 points, 100 points? So you'll set up your own scoring system if this is a, one, a way that you want to start valuing your customers or subscribers in some way. I'll say 100 points. And so if someone clicks this link, we're going to give them 100 scoring points. And now we're going back over to the tag action again, because for those who did not click that specific link in our message, we want to give them their own tag. So I'm going to connect them again and go back to properties and be able to select from the tags that I already have created. So for example, we could choose an additional inactive contact or maybe not engaged, or excuse me, a tag. So we could choose you know, any of the tags that we wanted that are already created here. And now I'm gonna go back to the elements and utilize another action here called wait. So this is fairly straightforward, hopefully by its name, but this is an action that we're moving over here and we are going to wait some amount of time before we do something else. It's a good idea to you know put some put some time put some gaps in between particular maybe actions and conditions that you do so everything is not just you know immediate and you're blasting subscribers with all of these workflow messages immediately you can space it out a bit give it some time and so we moved over the wait action but we need to go over to properties and define how long we should wait so let's simply say in this case we want to wait two days and so we could do this here so after we've added 100 scoring points to our clickers, we're gonna wait two days, and then we're gonna send them another message. So dragging over the send message action, connecting it to our two day wait period, and you can see our workflow, our you know interactive workflow has ended, but I think you can kind of guess how this is gonna go. So we're waiting two days, and then we're gonna send them maybe some specific message, maybe some kind of discount or exclusive offer or download based on them being you know an engaged, valuable subscriber of ours that has 100 scoring points. And so you can see now that everything is highlighted and selected uh, available here, which is of course how it will always be whenever you're actually you know, not in the interactive tutorial and simply creating your own workflows. So I hope you guys feel a little bit more comfortable with what you're gonna find and how you're actually gonna work within uh, the workflow editor by utilizing conditions, actions, and filters and building your workflow within this workspace here.